welcome to 37% Unplayed. We're a bunch of nerds involved in the video game industry talking about video games and game design. On average, 37% of Steam games in a user's library have never been played, and we want to get a chance to play them. We're going to be focused on playing and reviewing games in a format similar to book clubs. Once a month, we'll get together to discuss the past month's game, what we liked, what we disliked, design decisions that really stood out to us, or that we wish had been fleshed out further, and anything else along the way. This month's game is Lily, Child of Geos, developed and published by Bitmonster Inc. So, this month, we purchased and played a game called Lily, Child of Geos, developed and published by Bitmonster Inc. Uh, Lily Child of Geos is described on its Steam page as a quirky adventure RPG hybrid with stunning visuals, silky smooth graphics, a cinematic storyline, and a fresh new way to deal with enemies. So how do we want to start those? Do we just kind of want to go around and say how each of us kind of like felt about it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. I, that's my general feeling, too. Yeah. It's uh, nothing really to write home about. Didn't really shock or wow me in any way, but it was completely playable. At first, I was convinced it was a student game. Like, it was a really good student game, but it just felt like, in scope, and like, style, in partial jankiness, it just kind of felt like... You know, so, I agree with you, because... Uh, for, for refer- sorry, for oh, reference, sorry, for those of you who don't know, it was originally a mobile game yeah. that was ported into PC. Oh, oh interesting. Oh, yeah. interesting. Um, which was part of the reason I actually picked it, is because I thought it might be interesting to kind of consider, from that angle, the fact that how that varies the gameplay. Kind of. Interesting. Well, now that you mention that, it does feel a lot... Like, that would... For a mobile game, that was fantastic. Did anyone play it on mobile? No. no. Uh, sorry for interrupting. Okay. No, no, I, that's okay. I, I figured it was relevant to the conversation. Yeah, so. no, it's really good to know, especially with some of the design, or, like, the gameplay mechanics of decisions. It makes a lot more sense as for, like, a touch control scheme. Yeah. Um, but you, when you talked about style, um, what also sort of tipped me off to the, it is, like, feels like a student game, was this discrepancy in the art style itself and the art direction. I feel like, overall, it's, like, this really cute and chunky, like, really stylized feel, which is awesome, but then there were some strange decisions made with some of the textures that were very noisy and not... They it's, just felt more realistic than they should so have been. Shiny. It's so shiny. It's so, like, unreal. That like, as well. Yeah. My um, first note is shiny rock syndrome. <laughs> yep. yep. I didn't absolutely. notice any of this. This is what I get for not being an artist. <laughs> the thing that probably bothered me the most about, like, what describes what I'm talking about the absolute most is if you look at the protagonist, um, her hair and her skin... Um, they're textured in this very, like, overly stylized, really appealing way, but then her clothes have a lot of, like, micro folds, and it's, like, really intense folds that you wouldn't really see on something that's that stylized. Like, I would have preferred smaller, chunkier, more, I don't know, important folds than a bunch of more realistic detail. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. And it was that way on the... I'm just going to keep talking about this because I can't. <laughs> I, it's hard, yeah. right? I can't. <laughs> what what um, this is all about is talking about things <laughs> and or things that we liked about the game. Like, so go for it. Um, I absolutely loved the sprites and the constructs. I felt like yeah. they were really appealing characters and they were textured very well. And I loved the wood grain in particular on the mm-hmm. constructs. So I was pretty disappointed that all of the trees had a more like realistic looking texture and not that really chunky, nice wood grain that the characters had. That was, like, the inconsistencies that I saw there. The design said, who hates that fucking weird plank at the beginning of the game? Yep. That's the first thing I saw, and I was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> There's the plank, and it's just a plank of wood, and it's got, like, a face, and it's just a... Oh, it's one of the characters. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the other characters are great. Like, I yeah. like but all the, the, the designs, yeah. and... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, what choice... Did everyone pick at the well, end? we can't do that yet. Hey, <laughs> oh, it's too early. Straight <laughs> up for everyone. Spoilers are going to be all over this. This is a spoiler podcast. Well, no, I mean, yeah, I know, podcast but, is definitely and I'm probably going to start I'm with my spoilers the- first thing <laughs> <Okay>. on every <laughs> episode. Well, first things first, did everyone beat it? Yes. 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 Okay. Like, it's not a very long game, but I suppose I shouldn't assume that, not, that everyone beat it. It's good to do, yeah. Well, I went uh, back to college. I also went back to college. Yeah, high five! <laughs> and then immediately it just reloaded me in, and I was able to do the other one. So what, I, really? Yeah. I, didn't even... I thought everyone was going to choose to stay on the island, and that's what I would have chosen, but then I was like, okay, if everyone's going to choose that, I'm going to go back to college. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Really? 
But I, I was, was like, I was, I was also, also just kind of like, eh. I was yeah. also extremely disappointed that you just load back in and you carry on from yeah. that point yes. in the game. Definitely, because I was like, that okay, that wasn't meaning. a choice. Yeah. yeah, it had no meaning. Did anyone continue? I did continue. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so I beat it mm. way at the beginning of December. I don't remember which choice I made. That is what <laughs> level of impact the choice right. had. Yeah. Um, I remember something about going back to my boat, but yeah. for some reason my brain is like, no, you decided to go off and explore different things. Yeah. Maybe, but school. I think that's that the option? very Maybe end. we should explain the choices for the audience. That's like, probably but, a good idea. Um, so the, the choices you, so as you play through this game, we'll, we'll give a basic overview of what happens. So you're a kid that comes to this island who's like, uh, Studying magic, veggie magic <laughs> yeah, degree. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. you're studying magical yeah. uh, wow. vegetation yeah. and plants. Yeah. Like, yeah, so you show up on this island and there's a bunch of weird, like, construct people that are ruled by a man with a top hat. Um, and, a spirit. Yeah, spirit, yeah, spirit. And you go around and you uh, pick flowers you off of these spirits. You deflower. You deflower all these spirits. <laughs> that is hilarious. I didn't think about that. <laughs> <What>? uh, <laughs> I don't know why, wow. but that's great. Welcome uh, to the party. Uh, so, yeah, you go around and you pick flowers off of all these spirits in, like, a little minigame mechanic. Uh, that's and really the whole game. Yeah, that's yeah, the whole game. Yeah. You go around, and you do a QTE. You're going, you're going around picking the uh, flowers off the spirits, and ostensibly you're trying to free the constructs from yeah. the rule of the oppressive spirits. Yeah. With a top and, hat. Well, yes. I mean, the other spirits are also oppressive. It's not just the top hat one that's oppressive, Frank. <laughs> the top hat one is the worst, though. Well, he's a jerk, so we know he's bad, yeah. as the game has told us at every occasion. Yeah, it is, <laughs> it is not what I would call a complex no. narrative. Um, yeah, like, right, so right at the end, as you're, like, going on this journey, suddenly you get, a, like, a, me- a postcard from your dad that says... Your dad slash the professor. Yeah, yeah dad slash the professor. Which you don't know like who's your dad yet. You yeah, probably from, shouldn't be taking classes yeah. from your parents. That is actually kind of a conflict of interest. <laughs> it's like, okay, you need to come home now so you can turn in your, your thesis or whatever and graduate mm-hmm. college. And your character is suddenly conflicted about this, and you are immediately given the choice to leave or to do the to finish the game. Well, so leaving is going back and getting your degree. Yeah. But they in there they tie it in of like, well, but then you can't save the constructs from the this, these oppressive spirits. Yeah. Or you can do the spirits thing, but then you'll not graduate from college because well, you have to right then or take something. your class again. Yeah. <laughs> but next year. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the passage of time now really accelerated. I made the decision to stay. Partially because I assumed it was a false choice. I assumed it was the kind of situation where if you pick, I'm going to go back to college, they're like, no, you can't do that. You actually have to come here and stay here. And that is exactly why I also, went to look. Also because I love robots, and so I wanted to save the robots. <laughs> That's true. What I thought was really interesting about like the relationship between the spirits and the construct is it felt kind of like that android story that you see in sci-fi a lot. Like, well... Do the, do the androids have souls? Well, if they have souls and they're people and you can't oppress them and make them do stuff. But it was in a different sort of context, which seemed kind of cool. And I yeah. wish they would have played on that theme a little yeah, bit more. Because yeah. they're both more... wood people with souls sable to them. Like... Yeah. Well, there, there's a lot more, I feel like, they could have done with that kind of setting. <laughs> which oh, I yeah. feel is, like, is kind of disappointing. Like, I kind of enjoyed the flower picking game. Like, yeah. especially... Fine. Yeah, yeah, from a mobile standpoint, especially, mm-hmm. like, I can 100% see enjo- enjoying that as a mobile game. And it didn't bother me as a computer game. I actually mm-hmm. got real good at it. But, like, there's so much more you could do with this kind of weird island setting where you've got these crazy spirits and you can kind of steal their masks and flowers, mm-hmm. deflower them, and, <laughs> like, and these, these weird wood construct people who just want to live their lives, and they just kind of didn't... Yeah. Yep. Well, honestly, I feel like as a smaller game, I actually really liked that they only kind of had... They had technically two mini games. I actually felt like they did them both very well. So they had the deflowering one that we're, I guess we're calling it. Uh, and then they had the gambling mini game, which is... Show game. Yeah, oh, three, yeah. three I show forgot games. about that. I did that once. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they had three different levels. And the, the easy one was, like, super easy. And then the middle one was like, all right, it's a little bit. And then, like, I'm usually super good at these kind yeah. of shell games. The hard one was actually legitimately hard. And I feel like actually for both of the mini games, that one and then the deflowering one, I feel like they did a really good job. Yeah, I agree. Especially yeah, judging I, it as a smaller I, game and a like a mobile game. I definitely agree that they, what they did with the mechanics and the gameplay, they did well. Mm-hmm. Like, it, I mean, we're, we're all sitting around here, and 
None of us have had anything particularly negative to say about the gameplay itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, it may not have been necessarily our style of gameplay. Right. Uh, none of us are like, man, this is exactly what I was hoping for <laughs> out of a video game. But they clearly executed that part well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, like, at the end of the day, like, what do you do? You walk around, you... <laughs> You like explore. A button on things. Yeah, you and like. They actually yeah, encourage exploration. They do a lot. So much so that fucking Steam pops up achievements every time I pick up a flower. That I hate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, you pick up flowers, you break pots, and you walk around, you like, and talk to the constructs just mm -hmm. now. Um, and then you sneak up on spirits. You've got, like, three different types of buffs that you can do that with. Yeah. Did anyone actually use the buffs? I uh, did. At the end of the game, yes. I did. Yes. Yeah, a lot. Oh, okay. Like, basically at the end, I was like, I have enough of these, I'm just going to use them all the time. No. I did the exact same I thing. I used yeah. that's... an invisibility one on accident once because <laughs> I hit the hotkey for it, and I was like, why did it, what? Why did I get a thing? Yeah, I didn't so, end up using any of those at all. That was actually I'm something scared. that I wish that they encouraged more, is yeah. like, either make the buffs, like, you get less of them, and you actually have to choose where to use them, or like, make... Game, like getting into the mini game yeah. harder, so you have to explore and find things to sell to get them. So part of why I brought up the fact that it's a mobile game is I imagine that some of that is mitigated by things like turns. Like if you, I mean, I even though like I said I got pretty good at the mini game by the end, there were still some spirits that I didn't complete on my first try. That I might have been able to complete on my first try if I used one of the power ups if I remembered I had them, which I was not good about doing. But if you only can attack. You know, you only have five turns to attack spirits a day. You might be more inclined to use mm -hmm. your, you know, your grip power up. Okay. When you say it's a port of a mobile game, is it a direct port, or did they do something I like turns for the mobile game? So, like, is this completely different? I don't know. Okay. Oh, I, I just... haven't played the mobile version. I'm, I'm gotcha. speculating, especially based off of, like, the coins, which I, I'm assuming were harder to earn in the mobile version, or it was some sort of time-gated thing. Because, like, who didn't buy the skeleton key? I didn't. You it, didn't buy the really? skeleton key? I didn't buy it. Oh, yeah, that was the first keys. thing I went for. I yeah. wasn't, like, engrossed enough into the world to care to explore it. Okay. That's, that's valid. I 100% I did just because I was like, I A, I wanted to find out if it was actually a skeleton key or if it was a you can use this once to open any door. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought gotcha. it was at first, and then you told me otherwise. Um, and... I also had so much money by, like, the, yeah. once I came back from Splitwood, which I think is the second area, mm -hmm. I could buy everything. I, yeah, yeah, I think I had all the outfits and everything like that. Um, which makes me wonder if that stuff was microtransactions. Right. Um, exactly. And I, just, I tried to download it, but it doesn't exist on the Play Store, so it yeah, might only it be might iOS. iOS. Yeah. I see. Um, I'm not certain, though. One thing that I really liked was the, um, a lot of the collectibles, actually, how they, like, tied into other games. And the the um the clothing's in two. So like yep, there yeah. was there was like one of them's a triforce, but it's yeah. called like golden triangle or something. And it's like yeah, not I, sure what this is used for. I, I, I mean, it's like the did. fruit ninja katana. Yeah, I, that was like while those things gave me a chuckle, I was I just was left questioning why they were there. Yep. Dude, like, I had the same response, purpose, yeah. right? Like I felt like there were so many references to Zelda. I'm like, this is to just be. A, why is this not just a Zelda fan game? Like, <laughs> I mean, it's it's cute every once in a while, but every additional reference you make to Zelda, you're taking me out what's, of your game. What's funny is, I didn't put my finger on feeling like it was a student game when I first played it, but after Ryan said that, I agree. Us and honestly, the references are part of that. Yeah, yeah for absolutely. Me, because it. It feels like the sort of thing that we would have done at DigiPen when yes. making a student game. Like, ha ha, ha, ha. ha here's our Mario hat. Mm -hmm. ha, ha. Topical like, reference. Shout out to this game that we're playing right now that we don't think anyone else is playing. Kind of yeah. Thing. Like, I like. I think. It, I definitely think it was fun. Mm -hmm. Like, I and especially well, because it wasn't so engrossing a world that I was like, man, I really want to know the actual like secret story that's happening here. They didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't have a ton of disbelief suspended to begin with. Really? So. Okay. Who found the photographer? I did. I did. Yeah. I did. And the, do the picture thing? Yeah. Man, that, that was that gross. Well, also so creepy. Yeah, yeah. So I want to, yeah. yeah, that's another thing I want to talk about this game. This game is a really weird fascination with creeping on Lily. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 And I don't, I, like, I don't know where I land on that. It's just, it's just weird and it's there and like. Yeah, there's all these, like, you walk into a room and a construct has just pictures of you all over the walls. And she's like, yeah, hey, this is kind of weird. <laughs> and he's like, cool, go take pictures for me and yeah. I'll get rid of them. And then he doesn't. And then there's a later point in the game when fish pop up um, and 
demand you take off your glasses so they can see you without your glasses, then comment on how hot she is, and then come back. And then tell other fish. Yeah, yeah, go tell other fish. Yeah, and then those fish come back. And I think you're not hot. It was weird. Also, I'm the only person without glasses here. So I was like, Ryan, can you take off your glasses? Man, you're hot. How are you doing? Uh, I just did a sexy fake pull off my glasses. <laughs> hair flu. Ryan has glorious hair, so right. he can rock a hair flu. But yeah, no, I, I felt similarly. Like, I don't know what the point of that was. Like, are they commenting on something? Or is it just, like, this unintended creepiness that like, I was in there? I feel like... Whatever it was, it was unsuccessful. If it was yeah. Yeah. As a commentary. Apparently, because because it, yeah, it was, like, I know how I feel about it, which is super duper uncomfortable. Yes. Like, nope, not cool, not okay. And to just put that in there and never really comment on it makes it, like, I mean, I guess you could argue that she makes a comment about how creepy it is, but it's not addressed. Well, I think that's mm-hmm. a microcosm of the rest of the game. So, like, it puts ideas in there, and yeah. then doesn't comment on them, yeah. and instead just kind of says kishy little jokes, and kind of, like, talks about, it, like, softens everything. It's, it's just, like, there for laughs. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it was a bad joke, and they're yeah, like, ah, like, everything is just, joke. like, padded for kids. Like, they assume this game is for kids, so it's like, oh, here's... even creepier. Yeah, I know, it's <laughs> like, it. here's racial oppression. Oh, this guy's a jerk. Isn't he the worst... Give him but a creepy top hat. Yeah, yeah, but let's not really talk about it. Yeah. Like, even even throughout talking to the constructs and the spirits, there's not a lot of, like, just straight up, this is not okay. Yeah. Like, a lot of the robots are like, we're the spirits are mean to us, but eh. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys catch the cannibalism bit? Oh, oh yes, yeah. yes, 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 what? yes. Yeah. what? There's so, actually a, they, they do a callback to that too. Yeah, yeah um, there's a I might have references on it. Those Before those. you start on that, I want to say when I first started right. and I walked up on wood people chopping wood, I was horrified. <laughs> <laughs> Valid. <Sure. laughs> I'm really excited for I, what you're I about to talk about. Horror game in. <laughs> so uh, Frank played it. <laughs> if you if you follow the kind of like subplot, I guess you could say. There's the lady who's rotating the fruit in the bowl or whatever. She's like the chef of the island, but she has a there's side quest with her. yeah, there's a side quest to her where uh, you find out a little bit more that the spirits are making some of the other constructs disappear, and apparently they pulp oh. them to make not. a well, then, stew for other constructs. Yeah, then there's to a person oh, cooking, called. and if you talk to that person, they they comment of like, I'm not sure what's in the stew, but people have gone missing, and then they have this sudden realization of like. Oh crap, I get it now. Don't they even call it wood pulp stew or something? Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. I did I not see that quest that it's in. Like, how do you yeah. guys feel about that? Like, do you feel like that was a good, like, taste flavor of darkness? Like, because when you're talking about it, that's how I feel. I feel like it's exactly like the creepy photographer yep. and the wood chopping people on the beach, where it's this, and e- like I said, even the, the oppression aspect, where it's this really, really fascinating thing that you could. Do something with, mm-hmm. but like that's it. That's the plot. Yep. The yeah. plot is you find out that Swinging Green is people. Yep. <laughs> and, and, like, everyone's and, like, and everybody's okay with it. Doesn't tell yeah. anyone. Moving on. Nothing bad happens. Yeah. To Enjoy them. your happy like cartoon wood people. Mm-hmm. We're having a good time. Here's, here's your you know treasure or whatever for doing the thing. Well, that's honestly thinking about that and how you feel about how this went is it feels a little opposite to what you said the other day about. Um, like, death in games, where, like, you should just leave it. Like, they died. Okay, it's yes. done. Don't resurrect them. But now you're saying, like, it's a bad thing. Something bad has should happen to the bad people or something. Well, everything should be done with a purpose. Yeah. Um, okay. I think I a good example would actually be the latest Star Wars movie, where they tied up a bunch of threads with no actual, like, payoff. It's like, well, this thing happened... But nothing becomes of it. Yeah, and it's like, well... Possibly because the next movie hasn't come out. Like, it's possible that they do have effects. It's true. But uh, that that was kind of my general feeling of the whole thing. It's like, you were going through this whole kind of story or adventure that was a lot more tell than actual show. But then at the end of the day, like, your choices didn't matter. All these sort of world elements didn't really matter. It was just like, kind of a wrapper around their game mechanics and really paid off to nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Your choices matter to, like... They, like, comically don't matter. Yeah. It's, like, screen of credits immediately back in the game, and then you can, um, 
walk in, and all the people are like, oh, good thing you didn't leave, we're still oppressed. Right. Yeah. Which, I mean, <laughs> you could totally, if you wanted to, do something with that, like making yeah. it comical that your choice didn't matter. Or but you as the player could say, cool, that's the end of my game, and walk away. Yeah. But it's hard to feel that way because it doesn't take you back to, like, a menu. Yeah. It, it literally just puts you right on the, yeah. on the beach. Yeah. I feel like it shouldn't be on the player to have to create meaning out of your choices. Absolutely. Yes. I, in this game, like, I agree. Yes. Well, look, I, 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 I feel like uh, meaning can... I, so feel like, like you're, I feel like if you have choices in a game, it should encourage players to take meaning from it as well. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it shouldn't be entirely on the players to for there to be meaning in the choices. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like if your intention is for the player to be like, okay, I'm going to walk away from this, and that's the end of my story... The game should support that, okay. um, but the game doesn't. Yeah. And I feel like the game could support that if it simply took you back to a menu after you made that choice, and you could be like, "Cool, well, that was my choice." Instead, it's like there's no choice. Mm-hmm. Right. I had a question, I'm kind of off topic, I guess, yeah. but there was a button for rematch that I have literally no idea what it does. Like I tried pressing it. Oh, but it, it didn't respawns actually... the spirit in the world. Yeah. Oh. oh. Yeah, I did not respawn get that. in the map that. They were originally on, and, and then you have to go catch them again. Times, I did not get that at all. Yeah, yes. no. When I hit it, like the yeah, mailbox the guy came up, and I thought oh. I like broke it. <laughs> 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 like, oh, I didn't get to rematch with this guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was I going after. I became good friends with Mailbot. <laughs> <laughs> Mailbot was my bro. Yeah. I was, like, going after a guy, and I'm like, I'm going to chase him, and then all of a sudden the mailbot's like, hey, by the way, you've yeah. got a thing. And I'm like, come it's on, like, man. right I'm, now? Really? I the exact same thing. Uh, exact same thing. Maybe you do it intentionally. Um, Mailbot needs to mind his own business. He's a little bit judgmental. Mailbot is your friend. He, so, all, he pops in all the time, too. He's like, hey, mail. Mailbot here. <laughs> I'm gonna barf mail on yeah. him. Yeah. He was you, very he charming was as a character, though. Like, yes. vomiting the mail. Like, all of the characters, like, most of the major characters' constructs were very charming. Yeah. They had a very yeah. much, like, this is a weird Zelda character vibe, and it was really well done. I even found a lot of the spirits kind of charming. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like, they were delightful little antagonists. Just, yeah. And the, their little bios, oh, I thought, was so yeah. 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 Those, that yep. was my... Are those g- randomly generated? I don't, I don't believe so. Because there's yeah. a set of 50 of them. Yeah. Yeah. So they're all Their unique. Their personalities might yeah. be like randomly assigned or something yeah. like that. It's more what I'm yeah, what I'm um, I don't know. We can compare at some point if you want. But uh, yeah, like I, I went through, I can't speak for the rest of you guys, but I went through and I made sure that I, S, S or A or whatever the top rank was, no. all spirits. I did like that they had different ranks. Like if yeah. you want to keep playing this game, you can so, keep going for something and then get the reward. Speaking of, the of that, did anybody else figure out exactly what their formula was for determining... Ranking. I think no. it was, well, I, I, uh, okay, so I remember being like, I need to figure this out, and I think it has something to do with time and or how often you don't mess up, like, how often you, or like your grip meter kind of at the end, yeah, like, so, don't pick the thorns. I'm 85% certain that it was due to, it was based off of the difficulty of the spirit and how high your combo got. Yes. Oh, yeah, combo oh, also, so, I remember that being. And I, I think, think that, that was the... Only yes. indicator. I'm near as I can tell. Fairly positive that was it. But so there like you're saying are, you I can almost, take a ton of time and have basically no grit, but as long as you get combos to like thirteen or fourteen, it was, I think it was mm-hmm. higher for some of the later spirits. Yeah. But yeah, it's possible. It was I based off of different. Like, yeah, yeah. Me too. There wow. were only a couple that I didn't, uh, and it was usually a oh hey look all the thorns all the time, and I accidentally screwed up. It also yeah. took me like fifty percent of the way into the game until I realized thorns existed. What? And I was so like because oh, I wasn't paying attention. I was just like, grab, 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 I was just grab. like, press the button when it pops up, and that's what I did. And I was like, why do I keep losing? Did you play I'm on gonna control? Like, I did play it on the controller. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah. Does that even work? Yeah, I'm interested. That was now. something I wanted to talk about too. Uh, so a UI doesn't change, so okay. that made it harder to use your items because I had to guess what button was a oh, what sucks. item. And, it was like, and sometimes the item was double set to buttons, so like. Invisibility potion would be a trigger, and then also why. Yeah. So it was it was weird, and I just got lost in the controller. I'm, I'm a little surprised that they even have controller support. For yeah, right. Yeah. I can't even imagine how that. Yeah, it uh, felt goes. like it like needed the mouse. But yeah, how I, are you picking? I really it? wanted it because it was a third person action game, so it felt like to move around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and like, yeah, well, when you pick stuff, it's just your face buttons on your controller. So A B. X, Y. Oh, so like they would pop up like a flower yeah. and a thorn. Oh. Yeah, a so, flower would be A and a so, thorn would be Y. Well, they would alternate. So like every so it would like pop up and do like one, two, three, and then 
they would just have the icon right next to it. Mm -hmm. So you'd be like, so I'd be like, okay, I gotta press Y on this flower, A on this thing, B on this bomb. Mm -hmm. Did you play it all without? At first I did. I don't think I did a spirit without it. Because you actually have to tap and drag them off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's really Which is a lot better on the PC. Which is why I was like, like, I didn't. Huh. It very much changes how... Yeah, because for me it was just a QTE. Yeah. What was also really interesting about that is you could actually click drag over multiple things and pull multiple things off oh, at a single time. I didn't know that. I didn't I didn't know know that. That. that is way cooler. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Is like The yeah. minigame actually felt like was really yeah. well done. Yeah, like, Maybe not on a yeah, controller. For me, I was, I was literally surprised with that. Yeah. It makes a lot more sense yeah. that yeah. A, that would ha- be how they do it, and B, that that sounds terrible. Yeah. yeah. Like, that does not sound like a fun Like, I can game. see them being like, press button flick, like, on a control stick, but oh, not yeah. know what they did. Oh, yeah. it's too bad. Yeah, so I do recommend trying at least one spirit yeah. with keyboard mouse. I probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, of the, that's way better. I, I'm glad I played with the controller, because that gives a yeah, totally different that's perspective. Actually really awesome. yeah, that's I'm about. glad you did, too. I, like I said, I didn't even realize I had controller support, because I would have assumed it wouldn't. Yeah. Did you guys play the whole thing in one sitting? More I or less. Did, yeah. Yeah. I did, too. I forget if it was one or two. I, I found that half of the reason why I took the ending that I did was because I played it in one sitting, but I never got an icon telling me that it had saved my game at any point in time, and I couldn't find a place to save. So I'm like, I don't know if this is going to save my data. I don't want to put it down, and I just want the game to end because the camera's making me a little motion sick. So I'm going to go back to college. I had the same I thing, too. Too. Yeah. too. The lurping yeah. of the camera. Oh, yeah. it, it didn't bother me. Really? Which is funny, because, like... Uh, when Paul was mentioning earlier that his favorite game is Portal, like, I've never been able to get through Portal. It's a really fascinating game, it's a really cool game, and it makes me terribly motion sick. I can play it for about 15 minutes, and then I have to stop. I wonder if that's another mouse thing, because, like, on controller, that bothered me at all. Really? Yeah, and I yeah. think when I started, I was like, oh, this is, like, a crazy camera movement, so yeah. I yep. switched so I can feel that. Yeah, it, it took me a little while to get used to it. <laughs> But once I was used to it, it didn't bother me at all. <laughs> I found out if I don't look at it, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> Which was not exactly <laughs> the uh, best way to play your game. <laughs> Impressive, uh, actually. Mostly, if you just look at the mini-map, it's a lot easier to tolerate the uh, yeah. camera moving, because yeah. that's stationary. I basically yeah. just got used to it. That might be why it didn't bother me as much. I do, I'm like, I can't speak to other people, but when there is a good mini-map in a game, I do a lot of navigation by mini-map. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um... Like, Shadow of Mordor is actually an example of that. I do a lot of navigation via mini map in that game. Do we need to do, like, a disclaimer that we work at Monolith? <laughs> <laughs> I know, no, I know. I said that. Uh, I think uh, we have fools like that as well. <laughs> like, Dynasty Warriors. Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, I do almost oh, all of my navigation in Dynasty Warriors via mini map. Yeah. For me, it always comes down to level design, because, like, if I feel like the game is good level design, I want to not use a map. Yeah. Oh, you like force the, yourself yes. to not do that? That's um, fair. Like I, my recent playthrough of Witcher 3, I'm trying to play without the map. Um, Can you just turn that off or you're saying you want to look at it? Yeah, oh, nice. turn it off. Um, limited success, but that's, <laughs> that's a different thing. <laughs> that's the game where they do, a, like, I, it's been a while since I played it, but they do a lot of, like, search this area yep. and you actually have to, like, search if you don't use the nav markers and stuff. So, yeah, which is cool. Like, there's a, um, and their whole design is really good because they, They've got their weave, usually, um, mm-hmm. that draws you in, and they do a lot of stuff with paths that are really nice, but when you don't have your quest marker up telling you what the next thing you're supposed to do is, like, flick this switch on the wall. That's when it gets frustrating, because it's like I walked around this one place, like, looking through for, like, a switch or, like, a hole in the ground that I couldn't find normally. That way it would just point it to it my map. Gotcha. Um, but normally, yeah, you can just go into a place and you go into your, like, search mode. It's like... Oh, there's a glowy thing over there. I look at the glowy thing. You know, it's got blood, and then you like follow the um, the footprints on the ground, mm-hmm. which you can also do by like looking at your mini map and just like following the trail, which I like, which is give me a more bigger appreciation for the environment and the whole thing. Mm-hmm. No, I I totally get that because there are games that where I just want to look around, and mm-hmm. I would be completely happy to turn off the mini map and yeah. just kind of wander aimlessly and look at things. Yeah. Mass Effect 2 is another one of those games. Oh, I yeah. feel like I miss on, missed out on most of the environment because I was shooting shit over there. <laughs> yeah. I just, I still, I still want a Mass Effect mode that just effectively lets you skip combat and just wander around. I agree. <laughs> I want that in most games. <laughs> uh, the latest Assassin's yeah. Creed game yeah, has it. They, they had one. They nice. just remove enemies? Yep. Yeah. yeah. You, you wander around and it puts up a bunch of information 
different areas you go to, which is like their pre-production information. Like this is the is temple. This a separate mode? Yeah. Okay. So it's like the, the it's developer like the mode game. or something. Yeah. Kind of, but I mean, like you can still free theory. run and do yeah. everything. But yeah. That is pretty interesting. Now I kind of actually want to get the latest. I have nothing against Assassin's Creed as like a game. It's just I never really got into them, and so I I haven't been like, yeah, this franchise. I mean, it's hard to believe in a game franchise where they have a new one that comes out every year. But apparently, this one's good. Yeah, this one took two years. Like they did take a long time. I I unfortunately like didn't play the first Assassin's Creed until after like the whole parkour parkour thing was (laughs) the thing that is in all of the games. And so it just wasn't that exciting. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Because I'm like, I can do this in 12 other games that I'm already somewhat invested in. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I just kind of put it down. Yeah. I was curious what everyone's favorite hat was. Or hat of oh, choice. Photographer hat was yeah. my war. For Absolutely. Most of that, game. <laughs> that and karate hat were mine. I wanted that sweet top hat, and I got that sweet top hat. <laughs> I love the masks. The oh. masks any were great too. <laughs> any of them. Oh, I, I lied actually. My favorite was the bird mask. That one was oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. It looked like Majora's Mask. I thought it, it was did. another it Zelda kind of reference. Did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That. absolutely. I just really like birds. <laughs> I honestly don't recall. What? <laughs> uh, the most important choice in the game. What it, did you? It wear? had you wear one, and I think that was the first time I ended up putting one on. That was and the top I, hat, or the sorry, the photo hat. I think you needed to do that to yeah. wear or yeah. to take a. Do the oh, okay. photo cycle. Then maybe I switched it out to the bird one later. Okay. But I remember just wearing one and then just not worrying about it until I got the really fancy top hat and I was like, I guess I'll wear this. <laughs> you, so, you did have to wear the bird one to do a thing. Yeah. yeah. So outfits in my game or in games are like one of my biggest weaknesses. <laughs> so so you I did was, all of them? Well, I was so excited when I went and I clicked on that outfit tab and then I was immediately disappointed yeah. where it was just color swaps. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. Same there is one here. Uh, the, the Link Zelda one is different. Is yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. I, so, yeah. did anybody else pick up a companion? I did. Yes. At, there like, are towards the very end, yes. yeah. I At, got a fish. Yeah, that's the one I got. Oh. I got Navi. You get a f- I got Navi. a Navi. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted to, and I couldn't find where you were supposed to go. That was in the forest zone. There was the, huh. the plank one. I think you just talked to the plank. Yep. Yep. And he just kind of gives it to you. Yeah, and then the fish one. Now you could remember. I asked you where you got her, and you were like, "I don't remember." <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> the fish one was in the final zone. You talked to the oh. fish guy. I had no idea that was a thing. Yeah. yeah. I also stopped like exploring after like oh, the man. first two areas because I was just like, eh. I did a lot so, of exploring. Yeah, I love how Paul said it. Yeah. So. Uh-huh. So I would say that's actually two things that drive me a little crazy about that game is the lack of like tooltips or really any of the quality of life things that you see in modern games like quest markers or well, it has some stuff. Yeah. They had uh, some of those, but all the other stuff I felt like they didn't really need in this, partially because it was such a small game. Like it's yeah. not like explore these ten worlds. Yeah. I also just, like, have, explore the small area. I also have mixed feeling about the tool tip stuff anyway, because I think it's a little bit more exciting when you just discover that stuff. I suppose and it's true. like I had get any of that, but I think it's cool to like talk with you guys and be like, oh, that's a thing in that game. Like, right, yeah. Known was <laughs> Look, we learned. Like, no. That's one of the things I'm excited about with this is like Ryan played this with a controller. How did that work? <laughs> <laughs> and why? <laughs> no, I, I totally get it. Yeah. How did you guys feel about the stealth aspect of it and like the stealth stat There was a stealth aspect. I felt like it was basically uh, non-existent. Other than the potion, yeah, I didn't yeah. feel like I, there was. Yep. Again, another situation of I wish they had done something with it. Yeah. But, like, I feel like that's been my experience with a lot of games I've played that have a stealth element to it, where it's not really stealth, it's run up to the thing quickly enough that you catch it off guard. Yep. Yeah. Which isn't really stealth. Right. I yeah. found myself really disappointed because I tried, I overthought it, I guess. I, like, tried to hide behind, like, mm. bushes and stuff, but it wasn't a line of sight thing. It was if you were within a radius. Yeah. Yeah. So they could be, like, around the fucking corner and they would see me. And it's just like, well, I'm just going to rub to you then because it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, I, like, I, I, I was, maxed out speed. I, I, for that. I went yep. speed. Yep. Yep. That and you're going to explore, so, like, speed helps you when you're just running around, too. Yep. I went grip because I didn't realize there were thorns for <laughs> I was well, you like, needed that grip. I did. I was <laughs> like, whatever, and I still got like, I still got like S's most of the time. Right, we did not get any. <laughs> yeah, like, whatever. I'm gonna rip everything like out of your head. Like this. Uh, hey, those thorns are plants too. They're still useful for your what was it? Magical. 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 Speaking of which, 
though. Like, I was really disappointed that you go to this island to pick flowers, but you only pick the white ones, but they're really interesting, like, red poofy ones. Yeah. Yes! That Those you can interact are with. Awesome. Well, I didn't actually yeah. even notice that. Yeah. No, it's just like, oh. There were a handful of, like, non-white flowers, and yeah. like, why yeah. are we not interested yeah. in these ones? It was just it's another example of how the world building kind of fell flat for She's me, right? a very right? specialized uh, veggie The design of those flowers, though, magical. is on point. The fucking, like, swirl ribbon? Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. Are really good. cool. Yeah. yeah. Um. But on the stealth element, I was actually glad they didn't do anything more with it. I mean, okay, I was glad, but I wish it wasn't there. Because why is it there? Yeah, yeah, yeah that I makes mean, sense. I, feel yeah. I, I wish they'd either done more with it or removed it. Yes. Like, yeah. So it wasn't this pretend thing that you have to... Yeah, I mean, to me it felt like just enough that it was just like, we're just trying to get you into doing the minigame that we worked on. And here's like a little something that's not just go up and press A. Even though you're just going up in person. Yeah, that's fair. And, like, I imagine mm-hmm. investing more in stealth probably just reduces that radius yeah, right. that you can sneak up to. Yeah. And maybe it helps for the final area. I don't, again, I don't know. I, I just used all my items there, so it was like, all right, I'm invisible and I'm running super fast. Doesn't even matter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, overall, I enjoyed it. Like, it, it wasn't... By, by no means, I'm like, this is my new favorite game. <laughs> You've already established you can only have one favorite great game. Once you've said on the podcast, you're committed to it. That's why Ryan loves Crystal Warrior Ketchup. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> It's very true. Unless we cut that part out of the like yeah, then zero, in weird. which case that's just going to confuse yeah, me. Yeah, no one's going to understand. Uh, uh, now we need to oh, cut I'm out sorry, that part you, and keep it. Did you part. actually want to save the date recording? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm only doing the editing. That's true. So. Yeah. <laughs> Suck up the fall now. <laughs> you say what I want you to say. <laughs> control this podcast. Oh, wait, that's Frank. Frank likes to be in control. That's true. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, for me, it was charming. Yeah. Um, I had okay time with it. Like, yeah, it was just yeah, a little thing. I don't, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. I wouldn't like play it again. But I would be like, oh, well, that was a cool thing. This like studio did. I thought it was, yeah, it was technically impressive for being on a phone, and mm-hmm. it was just like in general for like an indie game, I was like impressed by the quality of the art and the design, mm-hmm. even though there were missteps all over the place. It was still like very technically impressive and like looked nice. I really appreciated, like, the the straying from the formula as far as the main gameplay mechanics True, went, right? Yeah. Instead of running up and killing the thing, you run up and you deflower them, which sounds more violent. <laughs> but it was nice. Like, if I were to, like, my favorite chunk of playing that game is being on the spirits and doing the minigame, and then the moment immediately after where they say something shitty to you and then spin off into the air, yeah. and then you get the info about yeah. them. Like, that mm-hmm. thing was my favorite bit. My I, gender is gamer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree wholeheartedly. Like, that, like I said, I, I really appreciated the spirits as antagonists. I thought yes. that they were, A, very, very kind of cute-looking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, they were they were well-designed. And, B, I love their weird personalities. Yeah, They're all just terrible in different yeah. ways. Yeah. <laughs> they were appropriately stupid. Yeah. 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 And so many of them were just terrible in, like, the most minor possible <laughs> way, and I loved it. Yeah, I would, I would definitely agree. Definitely not something that fell in love with or anything, but it was a nice little experience, and it was cute all around. They had a bunch of, like, little adorable things, like their spirits and whatnot, and, like, nothing was disagreeable. I thought that they took a mechanic and then did that thing well enough. This kind of goes back a little bit to, like, in it, my, the initial stuff that I learned about game design, which is, like, when you're making a game, choose a mechanic, do that well, and, like, do that mechanic, and they, they did that. Um... It wasn't super long or like, oh my god, this is the best game ever. But yeah, I feel like they did a good enough job. Um, and I really like the exploration. Final meme moment. Uh, every time I saw Pettigrew as the professor, oh, it just made me think no. of Peter Pettigrew from Harry Potter. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> was that yeah. not the joke? I don't or know. The reference? But that's like... all I saw was her father. And yeah. it was kind of gross. Yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> well, especially when you take in the fact that he named his kid Lily, apparently. How's that from Pettigrew? Lily is Isn't uh Harry's, Harry's mom's name. Oh, yeah. good point. Yeah. Yeah. God, I just made fun of you for being a nerd. <laughs> Way to go. Oh, so hey, so, so Allie, this forward. was the game that you had requested, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, what made you choose it in the first place? Yeah. That's a good um, question. So, a couple things. The first of which was that I wanted to pick something that didn't seem like it was going to be super long for this, since this was our first kind of inaugural adventure into this. I didn't want to pick something that I was going to be like, huh. We can all spend 50 hours playing this random video game that I saw on the internet. Um, partially, I didn't want to... I, I promised myself that I will not pick any... I will not inflict any horror games on Frank until it's summer so he can play them while it's light out. 
Thanks. <laughs> I'm totally going to pick horror games, but I won't inflict them on you until summer. Um, and then there was the fact that it seemed more interesting than, like, from a gameplay perspective than a lot of the other kind of RPG and action RPG games I was seeing on Steam. So uh, one of my hobbies is to look through the under $5 or under $10 pages on Steam and see what weird things crop up. Uh, Paul can attest to the interesting <laughs> content of my Steam wish list. It's fantastic. <laughs> very, very diversified. And I random. Just, <laughs> I just like to be like, hey, that looks like it might be interesting. Whatever. I'll add that to my wish list. Maybe I'll play it and buy, buy it and play it someday. <laughs> um, but so this was on my short list of ones I had recently bookmarked when we actually started to make this more of a concrete thing as opposed to a, hey, maybe we should do this at some point, gotcha. like it initially was. And, like I said, RPG seemed like a safe bet for the first one. And then short and kind of cute art style. So it seemed like it would be a nice starting game for us. Uh, so one other thing we want to do at the end of this podcast is just kind of go around and give a recommendation from each of us to you, our listeners... Uh, for something we just think you might like, or something we think is cool right now, um, that everyone will get a hoot of. So I'll go ahead and start, uh, and I am going to recommend the YouTube channel H Bomber Guy, which is like my favorite YouTube channel right now. He is a guy that does long video essays on video games and uh, political stuff. Um, he's like a leftist YouTuber that goes and like goes over alt-right YouTubers and, like, debunks the kind of shit they're saying in a really fun and hilarious way and talks about, like, feminist theory in a fun way, and I think he's great. Uh, one of his recent videos that he did was about the Halcyon, which uh, was a, con- a game console made pre-Nintendo in the early arcade era um, based on laser discs from the same studio that made Dragon's Lair. And he goes into depth about who really made Dragon's Lair and what Don Bluth's history with it, uh, what that is, uh, and Rick Dyer, who actually made that game. So, yeah, check out Edge Bomber Guy. So, my recommendation is Avatar The Last Airbender, the TV show. Um, it yeah. is fantastic. I love it. Um, a lot of people, I think, might think, like, oh no, that's a kid's TV show, but I, I think it's just as fun for an adult as a kid. They go into some life lesson type things. Uh, it's funny, uh, and just the concept of monks that fight with elements is fantastic. It's also, like, good kids TV. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's also good kids. you in all the right yeah. ways. Yeah, yeah. It's just excellent TV all around. My recommendation is fleece lined leggings. Oh, yes. Ooh. Because you look like you're wearing socially acceptable pants, but really you're basically <laughs> wearing sweatpants. And nobody will ever know unless you're like me and you tell everyone. <laughs> and I do. I second that my, recommendation. <laughs> my legs are so cozy right now. And they look fancy. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well then, I recommend Horizon Zero Dawn. Because that game is fantastic and it's probably my game of the year. Okay, so this is good. I, uh... Getting into it now. I haven't played it. I want someone to tell me why I should want to play it. We can talk about that now. Yeah. <laughs> Are we hot take zone? Get the hot take zone. Into Horizon Zero Dawn. So, I'll, I will go first simply because I know that my opinion is the is different from Paul's and Frank's. I have not been impressed so far. I am, I think, nine or ten hours in, and it's a neat setting. <laughs> She's shrugging for everyone playing yeah, at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we have to do Captain. I, 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 you know. I, 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 I tend to be the sort of person who's very, like, physically, like, hi, I'm going to raise Allie my hand. moves her arms as she talks. shrug. It and translates well on. <laughs> super great for audio. Um, but yes, uh, I shrug emphatically. How's that? <laughs> it's not bad. Like, the, the combat seems good and solid. I just... Their faces are weird. <laughs> oh, Which, like, I'm well, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so it comes back to the hyperrealism thing that I sure. keep harping on, which is if you do hyperrealism, you have to do it well, or I'm going to be like, what? Uncanny the facial animation is yeah. not good. Yeah, it's not. Oh, it's unfortunate. I agree with that, but I also cool. feel like 
At least for me, that doesn't, like, ruin the game. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying it ruins okay. the game. I'm saying it bothers me. Same with the hair. Their hair bothers me a lot. From a distance, it looks great. Up close, in all of the dialogue scenes, of which there are a lot. Not as much. <laughs> um, but, no, my, my big issue with it is, for me, it hasn't gripped me at all. Like I said, at, at about ten hours into a game, if you have not succeeded in at least making me want to find out what's going on, I'm probably not going to keep playing it. <laughs> you wait ten hours? That's a long time. <laughs> yeah. I give them, like, two hours. Yeah, it was. Honestly, I don't normally give ten hours. It is only because of the acclaim that Horizon Zero gotcha. Dawn has gotten that I have been willing to sink the ten hours into it. And to be fair, I have been told that it gets much better when you get to certain points. The problem is, I shouldn't have to wait right. more than ten hours for it to get to a point where I'm engaged with something. Mm -hmm. Not even enjoying it, because I don't even know if I'm going to necessarily enjoy it. I might, but even engaged with it. Like, I got the, as far as I got in it three months ago now, and I have not been compelled to pick it up since. All right. That was the argument against Horizon Zero Dawn. Revolt. Frank, <laughs> insert attack sound effects here. <laughs> <laughs> debate, mo debate noises, Duncan Ropa style, cut through those words, go Frank. So it's, it's an open world game. So if that's not your jam, you're not really going to enjoy it. But as far as an open world game goes, uh, the game is extremely performant on PS4. Like, there's... I don't think I got any frame drops or any problems with that. So mechanically, the game plays really well. All the individual game mechanics, not anything particularly to write home about, but everything is extremely well polished, so it all feels good. And pretty much every tool at your disposal is, you know, it, you can use it. And talking with Paul, everybody kind of has a different way of playing the game. And what I really love about that is that all of those ways are acceptable. None of them are like, no, you shouldn't do that because it doesn't work for whatever reason. It's like, nope, that, that works. It's just different. Um, so you can kind of find a play style within their toolkit and then kind of leverage that as your way of playing the game. Then outside of mechanics, uh, I, I love the setting. Robot dinosaurs are pretty fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, it's a very valid point. <laughs> and then, uh, the story for anybody who's like really good at guessing stuff is I, I think pretty easy to kind of figure out where it's going, but I usually turn off my brain for those sort of things. So it's a fun little ride. There's like some twists and stuff. And it, it just like, it really further cements you into the mystery of what this world is and why things are the way they are and the kind of ancillary characters that are involved in it. Uh, it's just, I thought it was a lot of fun to kind of go and explore that. So kind of every open world game has collectibles. One of the things I really loved about Horizon Zero Dawn is there's actually a couple subplots in the collectibles. So if you collect all the audio logs, there's an additional story that runs parallel to the main story that you can kind of pick up along the way. And it feels really satisfying to kind of come to the conclusion of that as you're coming to the conclusion of the main game itself. And then some general uh, quality of life stuff. Once you get far enough in the game, you don't have to start grinding for resources. Uh, one of the things I loved is you end up with a lot of the in-game currency, which is shards. You use it both for crafting and for buying stuff. But if you ever find that you're running low on something, you can just bench, spend shards to pick it up instead of having to like go out of your way and like find this one thing and grind it for the resources that you need to do something else. Nice. So pretty much it's just if you like open world games, it's really solid. It feels like a really polished experience. You can tell that they put a lot of love into it, and I think it kind of shows that it, it's just really well put together. Uh, and if I can add to that also some things. Um, so Frank kind of mentioned this, but like I've talked to, I think, like four or five different people that have played the game, and each one of those people have a different way that they play the game. So like one person's like, stealth is the only way to play, and then someone else is like, no, I, I use all the elemental shots or whatever, and someone else says, oh, no, I, I only use the slingshot. Oh, no, I only use melee. So, like, there is, like, a very diverse way to play the game. Um, is Christina the person you know that only uses melee? No, that was, I think, Michael or Rachel. <laughs> okay. Um, Probably Rachel. I think Rachel. <laughs> the environment, I think, I'm not an artist, but, like, I think it looks super pretty, especially in the DLC. Their snow Gorgeous. physics are freaking great. Yeah, I saw some of that. The um, gift looked good. Yeah, um, their environments are very great. And then there was a third thing. And I'm blinking on now. <laughs> Crap, someone sing a song real quick. This is Paul's Think About Stuff song. I'm gonna think about stuff right now. No, I lost it. Thanks for trying that. <laughs> that was a good song, though. Uh, was it about the DLC? I think that's the reason why I bring up 
Horizon Zero Dawn, because they did just release a DLC oh. recently, and um, it just adds more to this. It's more of the same. It's more story. It's more interesting little weapons. It's more things you can fight, and uh, it's a whole new region. Sorry, it was about combat. So, like, their combat, I think, might be the most fun combat that I've ever played. I can totally understand if someone says, oh, it totally gets repetitive, but I like that it's like, here's a new enemy, learn how to fight it. A little bit like Dark Souls, except there's they're not as punishing as Dark Souls. Um, and then there are, like, so there's, like, tearing things off of enemies will actually affect their AI. So, like, uh, well, tearing and doing damage. So, like, you could hit someone in the leg, and then that actually causes them to, like, stumble a little bit. Um, you can, like, knock off things like giant shooter things on them that takes off that attack. Uh, and then exploiting environmental, or, uh, elemental weaknesses. Um, I feel like that was also a lot of fun of, like, this particular enemy, if you shoot them in a particular spot with an ice arrow or whatever, will cause a giant ice explosion, which then makes them weak against normal damage, so you can actually do that. But to do that first, you have to maybe shoot them with a terror, uh, let's call it terror arrow or, or something. Yeah, to knock off armor. To, yeah, to tear off to the expose armor. It. Yeah. I feel like that was a lot of fun. And then there are also different AI within that, so it added a lot of variety to me. Mm-hmm. Well, I yeah, think every the thing that makes it like more interesting to me is you mentioned like figuring out what is going on with this world. Like that's exactly why I love the Soulsborne games. So it feels like something I could latch on to for that as well. Well, thanks for listening. You can buy Lily Child of Geos either on Steam or on iOS for your Apple devices. Uh, we did not find it on Android. No. <laughs> it, looked, it was exhaustive, I swear. <laughs> By which I assume he means he looked on the Google Play Store once and didn't immediately see it, and so assumed it was not and never had been on there. <laughs> Correct? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next month on 37% Unplayed, Ryan has some games for us. Alright, so next month will be my game choices, and I am going to say we will be playing Doki Doki Literature Club, which is super in the zeitgeist right now, and I don't think anyone else has played it here. Nope. Uh, so it is... A visual novel, uh, and it, I can't say much else about it, otherwise all spoilers will happen. Uh, so, uh, it's not too long, it's like three or four hours, um, and I'm also going to suggest we play Save the Date, since this game is pretty short. Um, Save the Date is like 45 minutes, um, so if you have extra time, play Save the Date, that'll be on the docket, uh, I think the two go together. That's right.